Lido Anthony Lee Iacocca was an American automobile executive best known for the development of the Ford Mustang and Ford Pinto cars while at the Ford Motor Company in the 1960s, and for reviving the Chrysler Corporation as its CEO during the 1980s. He was president and CEO of Chrysler from 1978, and chairman from 1979, until his retirement at the end of 1992. He was one of the few executives to preside over the operations of two of the big three automakers. Iacocca authored or co authored several books, including Iacocca, an autobiography, and Where Have All the Leaders Gone? Portfolio magazine named Iacocca the 18th greatest American CEO of all time. Chapter 1 Early Life Iacocca was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, to Nicola Iacocca and Antonietta Perota. Italian Americans who had settled in Pennsylvania's steel production belt. Members of his family operated a restaurant, Yakko's Hot Dogs. He was said to have been christened with the unusual name Lido, because he was conceived during his parents' honeymoon in the Lido district in Venice. However, he denied this rumor in his autobiography, saying that is romantic but not true. His father went to Lido long before his marriage and was traveling with his future wife's brother. Iacocca graduated with honors from Allentown High School in 1942, and Lehigh University in neighboring Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, with a degree in industrial engineering. He was a member of Tau Beta Pi, the Engineering Honor Society, and an alumnus of Theta Chi fraternity. After graduating from Lehigh, he won the Wallace Memorial Fellowship and went to Princeton University where he took his electives in politics and plastics. He then began a career at the Ford Motor Company as an engineer. Chapter 2 – Career at Ford Icoca joined Ford Motor Company in August 1946. After a brief stint in engineering, he asked to be moved to sales and marketing, where his career flourished. While working in the Philadelphia district as assistant sales manager, Iacocca gained national recognition with his 56 for 56 campaign, offering loans on 1956 model year cars with a 20% down payment and $56 in monthly payments for three years. His campaign went national, and Iacocca was called to the Dearborn headquarters, where he quickly moved up through the ranks. On November 10, 1960, Iacocca was named vice president and general manager of the Ford division, in January 1965 Ford's vice president, car and truck group, in 1967, executive vice president, and president on December 10, 1970. Iacocca participated in the design of several successful Ford automobiles, most notably the Ford Mustang, the Continental Mark III, the Ford Escort and the revival of the Mercury brand in the late 1960s, including the introduction of the Mercury Cougar and Mercury Marquis. He promoted other ideas that did not reach the marketplace as Ford products. These included cars ultimately introduced by Chrysler, the K car and the minivan. Iacocca also convinced company boss Henry Ford II to return to racing, claiming several wins at the Indianapolis 500, NASCAR and the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Eventually, he became the president of the Ford Motor Company, but he clashed with Henry Ford II. He was fired on July 13, 1978, even though the company posted a $2 billion profit for the year. Chapter 2 Section 1 – Ford Pinto In 1968, Iacocca foresaw the need for domestically produced, small, fuel-efficient vehicles, and proposed a vehicle that weighed less than 2,000 pounds and would be priced at less than $2,000. Although Ford's European subsidiary was already selling such a model, a team of Ford designers was assigned to create the exterior and interior of an entirely new car, which would be named Pinto. The Pinto entered production beginning with the 1971 model year. Iacocca was described as the moving force behind the Ford Pinto. In 1977, there were allegations that the Pinto's structural design allowed its fuel tank filler neck to break off and the fuel tank to be punctured in a rear-end collision, resulting in deadly fires. This case is a staple of engineering ethics courses as an example of a bad cost-benefit analysis. In 1978, 
All 1971 to 1976 Pintos were recalled and had safety shielding and reinforcements installed to protect the fuel tank. Chapter 3, Korea Chrysler Icoca was strongly courted by the Chrysler Corporation, at a time when the company appeared to be on the verge of going out of business and had just sold its loss-making Chrysler Europe division to Peugeot in an effort to generate cash because the company was losing millions already in North America. This was partially due to recalls of its Dodge Aspen and Plymouth Volara, both of which, Icoca later said, were among the causes for Chrysler's woes and customer dissatisfaction. Icoca joined Chrysler and began rebuilding the entire company from the ground up and bringing in many former associates from Ford. Also from Ford, Icoca brought to Chrysler the Minimax project, which, in 1983, bore fruit in the highly successful Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager. Henry Ford too had wanted nothing to do with the Minimax, a restyled version of the minivan, which Toyota was selling in huge numbers in Asia, and Latin America, and his opinion doomed the project at Ford. Hal Spurlick, the driving force behind the Minimax at Ford, had been fired a few months before Icoca. He had been hired by Chrysler, where the two would make automotive history together. Icoca arrived shortly after Chrysler's introduction of the subcompact Dodge Omni and Plymouth Horizon. Bearing a strong resemblance to the Volkswagen Rabbit, the front-wheel drive Omni and Horizon became instant hits, selling over 300,000 units each in their debut year, showing what was to come for Chrysler. The Omni was a derivative of Chrysler Europe's Chrysler Horizon, one of the first deliberately designed world cars, which resulted in the American and European cars looking nearly identical externally. However, underneath remarkably similar-looking sheet metal, engines, transmissions, suspensions, bumpers, and interior design were quite different. Initially the US cars even used VW-based engines, as American Chrysler did not have an engine of an appropriate size for the Omni until the 2.2 liters engine from the Chrysler K car became available. Ironically, some later year base model US Omnis used a French Peugeot-based 1.6 liters engine. Chapter 3 Section 1, 1979 Chrysler Bailout Realizing that the company would go out of business if it did not receive a large infusion of cash, Icoca approached the United States Congress in 1979 and successfully requested a loan guarantee. In order to obtain the guarantee, Chrysler was required to reduce costs and abandon some long-standing projects, such as the turbine engine, which had been ready for consumer production in 1979 after nearly 20 years of development. Chrysler released the first of the K car line, the Dodge Aries and Plymouth Reliant, in 1981. Similar to the later minivan, these compact automobiles were based on design proposals that Ford had rejected during Icoca's tenure. Released in the middle of the major 1980-1982 recession, the small, efficient, and inexpensive front-wheel drive cars sold rapidly. In addition, Icoca reintroduced the big Imperial, as the company's flagship. The new model had all of the newest technologies of the time, including fully electronic fuel injection and all digital dashboard. Chrysler introduced the minivan, chiefly Spurlick's baby, in late 1983. It led the automobile industry in sales for 25 years. Because of the K cars and minivans, along with the reforms Icoca implemented, the company turned around quickly and was able to repay the government-backed loans seven years earlier than expected. Icoca led Chrysler's acquisition of AMC in 1987, which brought the profitable Jeep division under the corporate umbrella. It created the short-lived Eagle division. By this time, AMC had already finished most of the work on the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which Icoca wanted. The Grand Cherokee would not be released until 1992 for the 1993 model year, the same year that Icoca retired. Throughout the 1980s, Icoca appeared in a series of commercials for the company's vehicles, employing the ad campaign, The Pride is Back, to denote the turnaround of the corporation. He also voiced what was to become his trademark phrase, If you can find a better car, buy it. Icoca retired as president, CEO, 
and chairman of Chrysler at the end of 1992. Chapter 3 Section 2, 1995 Return to Chrysler In 1995, Iacocca assisted in billionaire Kirk Kerkorian's hostile takeover of Chrysler, which was ultimately unsuccessful. The next year, Kerkorian and Chrysler made a five-year agreement which included a gag order preventing Iacocca from speaking publicly about Chrysler. In July 2005, Iacocca returned to the airwaves as Chrysler's pitchman, along with celebrities such as Jason Alexander and Snoop Dogg, to promote Chrysler's Employee Pricing Plus program. The ads reprise the If You Can Find a Better Car, Buy It line, Iacocca's trademark of the 1980s. In return for his services, Iacocca and Daimler Chrysler agreed that his fees, plus a $1 donation per vehicle sold from July 1 through December 31, 2005, would be given to the Iacocca Foundation for Type 1 Diabetes Research. Chapter 3 Section 3, Chrysler's 2009 Bankruptcy In an April 2009 Newsweek interview, Iacocca reflected on his time spent at Chrysler and the company's current situation. He said. This is a sad day for me. It pains me to see my old company, which has meant so much to America, on the ropes. But Chrysler has been in trouble before, and we got through it, and I believe they can do it again. If they're smart, they'll bring together a consortium of workers, plant managers and dealers to come up with real solutions. These are the folks on the front lines, and they're the key to survival. Let's face it, if your car breaks down, you're not going to take it to the White House to get fixed. But, if your company breaks down, you've got to go to the experts on the ground, not the bureaucrats. Every day I talk to dealers and managers, who are passionate and full of ideas. No one wants Chrysler to survive more than they do. So I'd say to the Obama administration, don't leave them out. Put their passion and ideas to work. Because of the Chrysler bankruptcy, Iacocca lost part of his pension from a supplemental executive retirement plan, and a guaranteed company car during his lifetime. The losses occurred after the bankruptcy court approved the sale of Chrysler to Chrysler Group LLC, with ownership of the new company by the United Auto Workers, the Italian carmaker Fiat and the governments of the United States and Canada. Chapter 4, Other Work and Activities Chapter 4 Section 1, Books In 1984, Iacocca co-authored an autobiography, titled Iacocca, an autobiography. It was the best-selling non-fiction hardback book of 1984 and 1985. The book used heavy discounting which would become a trend among publishers in the 1980s. Iacocca donated the proceeds of the book's sales to Type 1 Diabetes Research. In 1988, Iacocca co-authored Talking Straight, a book meant as a counterbalance to Akio Morita's Made in Japan, a non-fiction book praising Japan's post-war hard-working culture. Talking Straight praised the innovation and creativity of Americans. On April 17, 2007, Simon & Schuster published Iacocca's book, Where Have All the Leaders Gone? Co-written with Catherine Whitney. Chapter 4 Section 2 businesses. Iacocca partnered with producer Pierre Cossette to bring a production of the Will Rogers Follies to Branson, Missouri, in 1994. He also invested in Branson Hills, a 1,400-acre housing development. In 1993, he had joined the board of MGM Grand, led by his friend Kirk Kerkorian. He started a merchant bank to fund ventures in the gaming industry, which he called the fastest-growing business in the world. In 1995, he sold his interests in several Indian gaming projects to Full House Resorts, a casino operator led by his friend Alan Paulson, becoming a major shareholder and later a member of the board of directors. Iacocca founded Olivio Premium Products in 1993. Olivio's signature product was an olive oil based margarine product. Iacocca appeared in commercials for Olivio. Iacocca joined the board of restaurant chain Cuckoo Roo in 1995. In 1998, he stepped up to serve as acting chairman of the troubled company, and led it through a merger with family restaurants. 
He sat on the board of the merged company until stepping down in 1999. In 1997, Iacocca founded Iacocca, a company formed to develop and market electric bikes with a top speed of 15 miles per hour and a range of 20 miles between recharging at wall outlets. They produced e-bike SX, which became the first widely popular electric bicycle in the US. In 1999, Iacocca became the head of EV Global Motors. Chapter 4 Section 3, Activism and Philanthropy In May 1982, President Ronald Reagan appointed Iacocca to head the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation, which was created to raise funds for the restoration of the Statue of Liberty and the renovation of Ellis Island. Iacocca continued to serve on the board of the foundation until his death. Following the death of Iacocca's wife Mary from type 1 diabetes, he became an active supporter of research for the disease. He was one of the main patrons of the research of Denise Faustman at Massachusetts General Hospital. In 2000, Icoca founded Olivio Premium Products, which manufactures the Olivio line of food products made from olive oil. He donated all profits from the company to type 1 diabetes research. In 2004, Icoca launched Join Lee Now, a national grassroots campaign, to bring Faustman's research to human clinical trials in 2006. Icoca was an advocate of Nourish the Children, an initiative of New Skin Enterprises, since its inception in 2002, he even served as its chairman. He helped donate a generator for the Malawi Vita meal plant. Icoca led the fundraising campaign to enable Lehigh University to adapt and use vacant buildings formerly owned by Bethlehem Steel, including Icoca Hall on the mountaintop campus of Lehigh University. Today these structures house the College of Education, the Biology and Chemical Engineering Departments, and the Icoca Institute, which is focused on global competitiveness. Chapter 4 Section 4 Acting Icoca played Park Commissioner Lido in Sons and Lovers, the 44th episode of Miami Vice, which premiered on May 9, 1986. The name of the character is his birth name, which was not used in the public sphere due to the trouble of mispronunciation or misspelling. Chapter 5, Personal Life Chapter 5 Section 1, Marriages and Family Icoca was married to Mary McCleary on September 29, 1956. They had two daughters. Mary Icoca died from type 1 diabetes on May 15, 1983. Before her death, Icoca became a strong advocate for better medical treatment of type 1 diabetes patients, who frequently faced debilitating and fatal complications, and he continued this work after her death. Icoca's second marriage was to Peggy Johnson. They married on April 17, 1986, but in 1987, after 19 months, Icoca had the marriage annulled. He married for the third time in 1991 to Darian Earl. They were divorced three years later. Chapter 5 Section 2, Later Life and Death Icoca resided in Bel Air, Los Angeles, California, during his later life. He died on July 2, 2019, at his home in Bel Air, at the age of 94. The cause was complications of Parkinson's disease. His funeral was held on July 10, 2019 at St. Hugo of the Hills Roman Catholic Church and he was buried at White Chapel Memorial Cemetery in Troy, Michigan. Chapter 6, Awards In 1985, Icoca received the S. Roger Horcho Award for Greatest Public Service by a Private Citizen, an award given out annually by Jefferson Awards. Chapter 7, In Popular Culture The high amount of publicity that Icoca received during his turnaround of Chrysler made him a celebrity and gave him a lasting impact in popular culture. In addition to his acting role in Miami Vice, Icoca also made appearances on Good Morning America, Late Night with David Letterman and the 1985 Bob Hope TV special Bob Hope Buys NBC. While concurrently it was common to see depictions of elderly, bespectacled businessmen with charismatic, salesman-like personas, such as in an ad campaign by the Rainier Brewing Company. 
Icoca's success serving as Chrysler's pitchman influenced other companies to feature executives in their marketing, such as how fast food chain Wendy's has successfully utilized company founder Dave Thomas as a corporate mascot, since the early 1990s. Icoca's image was also invoked by rival automaker Ford in the marketing campaign for the 1993 Mercury Villager minivan, which depicted a competing car company lead by an unhappy boss with a physical resemblance to Icoca viewing the Villager with consternation because it is outselling their minivan. Fictional businessmen, and middle managers, such as Michael Scott on The Office, have been shown reading Icoca's books and attempting to emulate his methods. In a manner similar to Ronald Reagan, period pieces produced in subsequent decades have used images of Iacocca and the Chrysler K car to invoke the 1980s. The 2009 film Watchmen, which is set in an alternative history 1985, took this in a unique direction by showing Iacocca being assassinated by the film's antagonists, which has been said to have angered Iacocca when he learned about it. Iacocca, portrayed by John Bernthal, is a major character in the 2019 film Ford v Ferrari, which is a dramatization of the 1960s Ford GT40 program. The film was released shortly after Iacocca's death. Chapter 7 Section 1, Works by Iacocca, Lee. Where have all the leaders gone? Scribner. ISBN 978-14165-3000-2. Icoca, Lee and Sonny Clenfield, Talking Straight. Bantam. ISBN 0553052705. Icoca, Lee and William Novak. Icoca, An Autobiography. Bantam. ISBN 0553251473. Chapter 7 Section 2, Works About. Vlasic, Bill and Bradley A. Sturtz. Taken for a Ride, How Daimler-Benz Drove Off with Chrysler. William Morrow and Company. ISBN 0688173055.